Hello everyone, welcome to my class of satellite and radar system. I am Nilofar Yasmin and today we will be talking about radar communication. So first of all, what is radar? Radar is an acronym that stands for radio detection and ranging. So this is one of the important part of communication system that we need to study, being an electronics engineer. Right? These are the contents of my slides. We'll be talking about the history, backgrounds, few applications of radar, basic characteristics of radar, radar measurement principle, and terms related to it, then range equations, and frequencies that are used in radar communication. So, where did it begin? So, if we talk about the history of radar, so uh, it had its huge contribution in World War II. It started with the experiments by Henrik Hertz, Sir Hertz, in late 19th century that showed that radio waves were reflected by metallic objects. This possibility was suggested by James uh, Clerk Maxwell through his electromagnetic equations. We had Maxwell's equations that had contributed in radar communication later on. Most of the countries initially they developed radar uh, prior to World War II. They first experimented with other methods of aircraft detection. The major problem at the time of war was if some enemy aircraft has entered the territory, how to detect and how to destroy it. So the first problem was detection. So there were different means uh, uh, people were trying to come up with solution for these things. Then when radar came into existence. As we all know that necessity is the mother of invention, war has taught us many things, right? So if we talk about the development of systems, then radar came into existence. When, when we started with the communications with short pulses, transmitting them, receiving them, analyzing them, then came radar communication. There's a brief background of, about radar. It was developed in early 1990s, pre-World War II. War is not good, but war has taught us many technology. War has given us many technology. Even in World War II, encryption techniques were developed. So cryptography that we study, that uh, war has given us that. War has given us weapons, although I am in not, not in favor of war. But still, that is some technology that has been developed in that era. In 1904, Europeans, they demonstrated use of detection ships in fog, right? In 1922, U.S. Navy, United States Navy Research Laboratory, they detected wooden ship on Potomac River, right? So they have developed few technology. So in 1930s, engineers detected an aircraft with simple radar system. Initially, the radar consists of just sending some signal, receiving, analyzing, and detecting that some foreign body is present. Right? Although radar has significant impact in military, so it is called as the invention that changed the world. In the book by Sir Robert, right? Radars, uh, radar still has got deep uh, military root, but it continues to be an integral part of civil communication as well. So what are the various applications for which we use radar? If we talk about ground-based stationary monostatic radar, he, here, my transmitter and receiver, they lie together, right? In civil applications, they are used for weather, uh, weather, uh, weather application, astronomy, and traffic control, right? For military, they are used for air defense, missile defense, and perimeter defense to protect the peri uh, periphery. If we talk about the ground-based stationary multistatic uh, radar, here it, it consists of n number of monostatic radars altogether in simi uh, similar physical geometry. It is used in radar astronomy and in military it is used for air defense. So like ground probing radar, it's used in archaeology, ice sounding, 
tunnel, in military it is used for tunnel detection, landmine. If I talk about airborne, then to avoid space collision, right, air traffic control. In case of military also it has great advantage, right. If we talk about the airborne spaceborne multistatic radar, they are used in uh, interferometric uh, SAR, they are, they are planetary exploration and they have many applications, right. Here these are the abbreviations which I have used here. SAR is our synthetic aperture radar, right. If it is monostatic, it is co-located transmitter and receiver, they are located at the same place, multistatic is multiple transmitter or receiver. If I talk about the characteristics of radars, they basically use electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are radiated, so they are usually in ultra high frequency range or microwave frequency range. Frequency is in megahertz, gigahertz or terahertz. These are governed by Maxwell's equations. They propagate at high speed, that is speed of light. We, we know that EM wave propagates with speed of light. Right? They use various antennas that we can discuss in detail. The related technologies include ultrasound, seismic and sonar and microphones, accelerometers, these are the related technologies. If we talk about the active sensors, they provides its own illumination, they involve both transmitter and receiver and related technologies are purely passive, right. So uh, what are the various capabilities of radar? Radar basically is used to detect the presence of any enemy or foreign object whether moving or static in our territory. So the first task for which we use radar is for detection. As the acronym stands for radio detection and ranging. The first task is detection. And the next thing, what does ranging means? Range has different meaning although here in radar. Here the range refers to the distance of that foreign body from our transmitting end. So when we talk about ranging, range means distance here, distance and direction. So we have to keep in mind range here has got a different term when, whenever we talk about radar, right. It can be used to analyze or measure the received signal strength. It can be used to measure the radial velocity of the target. Here the, uh, the enemy object or, or anything which is present in vicinity which is detected here is called as target. So there, these are specific terms that we need to take care of. We need to uh, remember that what is range, what is target here. Target here is the thing that is detected, right. Its spatial distribution can also be measured or calculated. Various target characteristics can also be measured here like the particle size distribution, like precipitation, the roughness of the surface, the water content, the motion, various motion characteristics and surface displacement. These all things can be calculated. So these are the capabilities of radar. So this has got wide capability. So this makes, a, uh, this makes it a very strong contender in today's communication need. So the basic principle is at my site, if I am using a radar, I'll be using an antenna, right, which will be propagating my EM waves. Maybe continuously in the nearby area. And if some object is present, that EM wave will strike the object and will be reflected back, right. I am continuously transmitting electromagnetic waves that travels with the velocity of light. If nothing is present, this will go for infinite time. If something is present, it will strike the surface and will be reflected back. And as I am using a duplexer here, which is capable of receiving the signal as well, I'll detect the signal and from the round trip time, I can calculate how much time it took 
my wave to travel and uh, to to go and come back so here i know that my wave has traveled with the velocity of light which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second i'll be keeping count of the time which will be the round trip time so right i can call it 2t or i can call it t round trip time and the distance that that was covered was twice of the linear distance at which the object is from here. So, as we know that velocity can be calculated like distance, uh, we can calculate distance equals to velocity into time. So, the distance that will be calculated that will be the twice of the linear distance and by by, by taking half of the distance, we can actually derive the maximum linear distance at which my target is. So, this is the basic principle of radar operation. We transmit signal, we wait for the signal to be reflected back and to be received, right? We calculate the round trip time uh, as we know at what time the signal was transmitted and what time it is received back. The time elapsed is the total round trip time. And that time is taken to cover twice of the distance as the signal travels to the target and then comes back. So, halving that distance will give me the linear distance of the target from my antenna. So, this is how my radar basically operates. What's good about radar? It can operate in darkness, in haze, in fog, in rain and snow. Just such a, such a, such a good feature of radar, right? It has ability to measure distance with high accuracy in all weather conditions, right? Now, the question is, detection is easy, but how to calculate range? What I discussed in basic manner can be shown here. Here, the distance between the radar and target is called range as discussed earlier, right? Distance here is my range range of the target or simply range which here mathematically is denoted by capital R. We know that the radar transmits a signal to the target and accordingly the target sends an eco signal. What was transmitted was incident wave, what was reflected can be called as eco signal. To the radar with the speed of light, speed of light is denoted by C. Now let the time taken for the signal to travel from radar to target and back to radar be T. Consider the time elapsed to be represented by capital T. Then the two-way distance between the radar and the target will be 2R. Twice of the distance. True. Since the distance between the radar and the target is capital R, actual linear distance is capital R, but 2R is the distance traveled by the signal actually because it has struck the target and it has come back, right? Now, the following is the formula for speed. We know that speed is distance upon time. So, hence from here distance can be calculated as speed into time. Here distance is 2R, speed is the velocity of light, time elapsed is what our system or operator knows, right? Hence, it can be easily calculated from here. We can calculate it and by halving the distance, we know what, what, what is the linear distance of the object. So, we have detected when we have received some signal back, that means something is detected. Now, if something is detected, at what distance it is? It is calculated using mathematics, right? Now, there are several terms which are related to radar communication that we need to know. That is pulse, uh, the first thing, pulse repetition frequency. First thing, whenever we transmit electromagnetic waves, we can transmit sinusoids, either we can transmit pulses, that is high frequency train of pulses, that is in rectangular form, right? So, uh, the most famous technology that we use for radar communication is transmitting pulse electronic waves. So, when I transmit pulse waves, at what frequency I do transmit it, that is the pulse repetition frequency, right? Radar signal should be transmitted at every clock pulse, true. 
Now the duration between the two clock pulses should be properly chosen in such a way that the echo signal corresponding to the present clock pulse should be received before the next clock pulse. I need to elaborate this. Suppose I transmit, first pulse is transmitted. It travels, it travels, it strikes the object and it comes back. I need to make sure that I keep a time gap of such amount so that when my signal is reflected back, my next pulse is transmitted back after the reflection. But here the reflection is not determined, is not fixed. This object could be anywhere. This could be far. And if it is far, uh, the time taken by the echo signal will be little longer. So I have to keep my pulse repetition frequency in such a manner that I don't transmit it before I receive my last before I receive my last echo back. So that is something I have to take care of. But I cannot delay it too much longer time because I may miss out the target which I'm looking for. So keeping all these things in mind, I have to keep my pulse repetition frequency at some optimum level, right? There's a related term, maximum ambiguous range, which I'll be discussing after the slide. So this, this has to be maintained, right? The travel time between the successive clock pulses is called pulse repetition time. You know that at what time the pulse repeats, right? Interval between the, the this, this is, uh, represented by T subscript P, that is pulse repetition time. And frequency here, time is T subscript P, pulse repetition frequency is F subscript P. And the reciprocal of pulse repetition time is called as pulse repetition frequency. So these two are reciprocal of each other. TP equals to 1 by FP or FP equals to 1 by Tp, right? Tp is usually um, uh, represented in seconds and Fp is usually expressed in hertz. We know that radar signal should be transmitted at every clock pulse true. And what is maximum ambiguous range? As we need to take care of uh, the thing that uh, after before I transmit my second pulse, I should be receiving back the last echo from the target, right? So, uh, in that case, I have to consider that this signal is traveling some maximum distance. After that, it is re getting reflected back. So, that is my maximum ambiguous range after which I do not expect my echo signal to travel back. So, the maximum range up to which my target could be detected is the maximum unambiguous range. If we select a shorter duration between the two clock pulses, then the echo signal corresponding to the present clock pulse will be received after the next clock pulse. Due to this, range of the target seems to be smaller. Right? I, I, I might misunderstand, uh, misunderstand that, that the second pulse I have just transmitted, I am receiving back. Maybe the target is so close to me, but that is not the actual case because I am receiving the echo of the first pulse after transmitting the second pulse. So that is creating a confusion, right? So to avoid it, so we have to select the duration between the two clock pulses in such a way that the echo signal corresponding to the present clock pulse will be received before the next clock pulse starts, right? Then we will get the true range of the target. And it is also called as maximum unambiguous range, the range beyond which I do not expect some echo signal to be transmitted back so that I don't get confused with that whether the echo signal is from the first pulse or from the second pulse, right? So that maximum range is called as maximum unambiguous range. So pulse repetition frequency and maximum unambiguous range, these two are very important parameters that I have to take care of whenever we use radar communication. So here, by R, we represent range. By R, subscript UN, uh, we represent R unambiguous. T, 
T is the travel time, T P is the uh, <coughs> uh, pulse repetition time. Here, velocity of light into T P by 2 gives us maximum unambiguous range, right. So, here I have related my T P with pulse repetition time with unambiguous <coughs> range or I can also relate my uh, unambiguous range with pulse repetition frequency as these two are reciprocal of each other. So, Tp I could replace with 1 by Fp. So, this is how I can uh, derive my maximum unambiguous range. Next is round trip time of flight. We know the calculation, right? Transmitted signal propagates as a, uh, with the speed of light through free space, right? Travel tra time from an antenna to the target is distance upon velocity, right? Total round trip time, this. At 0, the signal has started, transmit sequence begins, slight delay until the transmit waveform exists in the antenna. These small internal delays are constant and typically ignored. These are intentionally in uh, introduced delay. Through timing, calibration can remove these internal delays from range measurement, right? You can see, tau represents the time for which pulse persist. Tp or T represents the time here, T is from the start of first pulse to the start of next pulse and Tp is from the end of first pulse to the start of second pulse, pulse uh, repetition time, right? <clears throat> this is the actual velocity of light for precision instead of 3 into 10 to the power 8 we are taking it 2.99792 into 10 to the power 8 and same formula which we have discussed which is applied this is just the elaboration of what I have discussed just now right therefore the targets range can be obtained from the time of flight t true calculated now, if I talk about radar frequency, what are various radar frequencies that we use? Ta radar typically operates between 1 megahertz to terahertz, right? It is ultra high frequency and microwave frequencies we use for radar. Antenna size also depends on this, right? We know that the wavelength depends on velocity upon frequency. As it operates in ionosphere and resolution is an important parameter here. Here the radar's range equation uh, range resolution is inversely related to the signal bandwidth. That means large bandwidths may be required for some applications and are not achievable with lower frequency systems. Right? There is noise also in radar that we need to study. These are typical things that we need to study. These are various frequencies that we use with radar communication. Right? You can go through it. Frequency and wavelength are related with the term and corresponding to the frequency I have mentioned here the wavelength. There are various external noise sources right like extraterritorial noise, atmospheric noise, man-made sources that has to be taken care of whenever we study radar. So clutter is a term that we will study in detail in our preceding lectures. Now. Whenever we talk about radar, the range equations has to be presented well, right? So here in radar communication, we typically talk about the range equations. We know that range is the distance of the target from the antenna, transmitting and receiving antenna, right? And how can I express uh, the power that was transmitted and the power which was received? So the relation between the distance and the transmitted power is what we derive in our range equations. The radar range equations represents the physical dependencies of the transmitted power which is the wave propagation up to the receiving of the echo signals. Here uh, the received power is represented by P subscript R returning power. The transmitted power is expressed by P subscript T and the range, the linear distance is represented by R. In such case, if I consider this to be isotropic radiator, that is my, uh, the antenna which is actually transmitting waves, 
if I consider it to be an isotropic radiator, then the power density at range R from an isotropic antenna. For all the calculation, I have to consider the ideal thing. So, I consider my antenna here is isotropic antenna, which is uniformly radiating in all directions, right? In that case, the power density can be given by power per unit area. Density is power per unit area. For that spherical thing, spherical transmitter, area is 4 pi r square, transmitted power is Pt, right? Now, if the power density, uh, the power density at the target, at the target means here, at the target from an antenna with a an transmitting gain, if I consider the gain of antenna as well, see, this is the simple equation of power density. But in case of radio communication, when antennas are involved, noises are involved, I have to take care of the transmitting gain, I have to take care of the distance, I have to take care of the noise, right? So, incorporating all those things in the equation, if I consider what is the power density at range R from a directive antenna, it is given by, along with transmitted power, I consider the term gain. So, this gives me a precise calculation. So, instead of Pt by 4 pi r square, I write it Ptg by 4 pi r square. Now, measure of the amount of incident power intercepted by target and radiated is, radiated is, then my radiated power could be given as, here I have to consider this cross section of the target as well, right? Because what is radiated depends on my target as well the shape of the target as well, right? So, here re-radiated power density back at the radar can be given by this equation. Hence, I can rewrite my power received in this term. Here, the new term introduced is AE, where AE is the effective aperture of the antenna. We know that the total power is not reflected by the complete physical structure of the antenna, but the effective aperture of the antenna. So, for more precise calculation, I won't consider the um, area of the antenna, but the effective aperture of the antenna, which I write as A subscript E. Then the maximum radar range, R max, accounting minimum detectable signal, that is, uh, if, if some small amount of signal can also be detected, then how my maximum range can be written? Then my maximum range can be rewritten by this expression, which includes my transmitted power, gain of the antenna, the cross section, effective aperture, as well as minimum detectable signal. And as we know, gain is given by this formula where lambda is the wavelength of the signal which we are actually using for transmission and reception. Considering all these things, I can rewrite my final equation as R max equals to this form. So, this is one of the form of writing my range equation, where the range that is target is at what distance from the transmitting antenna, it depends on these parameters. How much transmitted power is used, what is the gain of the antenna, what is the cross section, what frequency or uh, wavelength of the free, uh, wavelength uh, is used for transmission and what is the minimum detectable signal. So, my range depends on all these parameters. So, this modified equation is called as range equation. Although it has many forms, I can either write in this form, either I can write in this form, right? These are various radar frequencies that we use. As earlier discussed, radar uses ultra high frequencies and microwave frequencies. So, these are expressed here in megahertz to gigahertz range, right? And in microwave terms, these are these bands are named as L band, S band, C band, X band, K under, K, K above, V band, W band. And the frequencies corresponding to it and the wavelength are represented here. So that's it for today. And we begin in the next class. We continue with this lecture in the next class. These are the references I have used. Thank you.